Good evening and salutations, my BNB fans. So this this was a somewhat interesting episode. Um, so Steffi is watching Thomas talk to Sheila, and I thought that she was going to sit there and try to confront them because she couldn't hear what they were saying. But instead, she goes back home and she talks to Finn, and she's like. Why is Thomas and Sheila hanging out? Like, what's going on? Thomas despises Sheila. And Thomas has been acting very strange and very sus and very stressed. What is going on? And they're meeting up in a back alley. Now, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like the only way to sit there and try to explain why they are meeting in secret is for them to hook up. I feel like that's the only way that they're going to sit there and keep up this charade. Um, also, I'm not going to lie. It's really interesting um, looking at some of the old pictures of Thomas because as far as I'm knowing him, he's always had the beard. Like, even when you see the pictures, like the intro and everything like that, he doesn't have a beard on. I'm just like, this just feels so off. I don't even know how to sit there and describe this scene. Repetitive. And this is the scene between Sheila and Thomas. Sheila just goes all, just pretty much repeats herself as far as telling Thomas to keep his mouth shut. And Thomas, I mean, and I get it. You got to sit there and kind of repeat some of the stuff for the new people who are watching. And I get that. And that's great. But you have a half an hour show and you got to sit there and practically tell us everything what we already know before. Thomas is like, oh, well, you don't want to sit there and trip Brooke and a drinking and this, that, and the third. And she wouldn't have did that. She wouldn't have, like, there wouldn't have been a falling out between those two if Brooke didn't drink. And I'm like, well, technically, it wasn't so much that the kiss as much as it was the allowing Deacon to be back in their lives, to be back in that house, um, which was really the problem. But, okay, whatever. We're just pretty much rehashing everything that happened the last day and the day before that. And in the end, I'm not going to lie, it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, Sheila just tells Thomas to keep quiet, and Thomas doesn't really say too much in his life, bro. Can you just pick a damn lane? Pick a lane which you want to go in, okay? Because to be honest, it's just the same conversation that you two have been at. And I get it. Soap operas in nature is somewhat repetitive to a certain extent. They can tell new stories, but sometimes they can rehash the same stuff that goes on um, daily because they got to sit there and catch people up. So while that's good for the new people, for the people who've been watching it for a while, it's like, man, this seems like I've been having the same conversation for the past two damn weeks. 18 minute show, and I felt like I kind of just watched the same thing for four to seven days in a row. Awesome. Now, let's talk about Brooke and Hope, because to be honest, this was another repetitive scene. Brooke blames herself. For the, you know, for the death of, you know, the relationship between her and her husband. Hope tries to cheer her up. The only difference is, is that, you know, Brooke goes back, you know, she has, we pretty much play flashbacks of Steffi, Stephanie going in on Brooke. And I gotta sit there and say, those things are interesting to me because, you know, again, I'm new to the, you know, I'm new to the party. And, um... You know, it's just really interesting to sit there and see those flashbacks. Um, but Stephanie was very clear about how much she did not like Brooke. The arguments that they've, you know, the, the, the tension between those two and the fact that, you know, this was another probably screw up by Brooke. And, you know, Stephanie, Stephanie is pretty much just kind of laying down the law at that point. Um... 
Yeah, it was pretty much the same thing. You know, she's like, you're not good enough. But not so much that she's not good enough. It's like, you screwed up again. You caused my son pain. You, you could have left well enough alone, but you want to sit there and battle with me. And long story short, I won. More or less. I'm not going to lie. She kind of, Stephanie, in some ways, kind of looked like Vicky. From one like live, and I I don't know if they were related or anything like that, but I saw certain like a certain image I just saw in her. I was like, damn, you really look like Vic, like um Vicky. Um, so those things were nice, but then when it went back to present day, it was just rinse and repeat. And then you know, Rich comes in, and you know, Brooke is like. Oh, you know, I, I miss you. I just don't want to be with you. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't do this stuff without you. And I'm like, that's, um, that's all sorts of problems. To be fair, I get it. You go through a breakup, any breakup, everything that you do moving forward kind of sucks. Okay. Um, the food don't taste as well. You don't sleep as as well. You felt like, you know, it's just, it's a lot of stuff in your day is subtracted. Okay. So I get it. And she pours her heart out. And she's like, you know, we could sit there and make this work and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, Rich, this is partly on you, bro. Because yeah, you, you said that you, um, you couldn't take it anymore. And you, you moved out and you moved in. With um, Steffi and Taylor and everything like that. But until you actually sit her down and be like, listen, we ain't going to work anymore. I'm with Taylor and that's that. Every time he comes in and he just doesn't say anything and she's just going on and on and on. He's like, I'm like, bro, can you, can you just, I don't want to sit there and say, can you pick a lane? Because in a way he kind of did, but you're not really talking to her like you need to sit there and have this talk with her because you sit there and say you don't want to hurt her, right? You don't want to hurt her. Then make it very clear that this is absolute and that is the end of that. And I'm just going to sit there and be with Taylor and the end. But you haven't done that. And that's been the thing that's been like, to be honest, starting to piss me off. Now, Eric came in there and some model was sitting there flirting with him. And I'm like, sweetheart, you do realize that that can pretty much be your grandfather, right? Right. You cool? Okay. All right. Um, that's, um, okay, lady. Um, so she leaves and more or less, well, not more or less, uh, Eric is pretty much team bro. Now, granted, he's like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm going to support you and whatever you want as far as Ridge and, you know, what's going on with them. Um, he talks about how everything is good with his marriage. Of course, we haven't really seen him together. I'm still wondering if he got that um that thing solved, you know, that, that thing that was kind of bothering him when it came towards um performing. It, um, that gets solved. We we still on that. We just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. You doing that? Like what's what's going on with that? Like dead serious. And I know this is kind of. I don't want to say this is petty, but I'm like, bro, what's what's going on? Now granted, he does sit there and say, hey, listen, don't let Quinn know about what that model was doing because you know she'll pretty much have him fired or whatever. I'm like, and you cool with that? You cool with her just running around just firing people because? They looked at you the wrong way and they gave you an, an erection. Like, whatever. Um, he does sit there and tell, you know, Rich, listen, he's like, at the end of the day, I'm going to support you whatever you want, but, you know, what did he say? But that's what he said. He was like, it's not too late to be with, you know, it's not too late to be with Brooke. You know, I, and I think this came from the fact that, you know, he's living with Taylor, the kids are happy and everything like that. But he's like, listen, your your kids are going to support you no matter who you choose. I don't know exactly how, how much that is true, but 
he pretty much like, listen, just because everything is going a certain way because you're living there and you're getting influenced by your kids and, and Taylor's there and she's a great person, it doesn't mean that you can't sit there and choose Brooke. Like, you can still choose Brooke if you want. You know, it's not binary. And I think that's the issue that I'm having with Ridge. It's like, you're with Taylor and this, that, and third, but Taylor's like, oh, well, you know, you don't have to sit there and pick and choose. You know, you, you can take your time and then she'll sit there and start being all up on top of him. And I'm like, bro, can you just, again, this comes back down to pick a damn lane. Anyway, I feel like that's about it. Um, So with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what you thoughts down in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video.